Priscilla, thank you, Brother Mark. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Truly, the Lord inhabits the praises of His people. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm honored. I've given this opportunity to stand in front of you to bring the Word of God this morning. And I'm encouraged to see you guys coming to His house faithfully. Amen. Amen. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. That's what Brother Denmark said. Ain't you glad you're in the house of God this morning? I'm glad I'm in the house of God this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let's open our scripture in the book of Matthew, chapter 18. Let's begin reading in the verse 1 to chapter verse 4. And it says, at the same time, came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and sit him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that's very clear. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself. Say humble. Humble, humble himself as his little child. The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Let's bow down our head once again and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we gather here today because you are here, Lord. We are here because you have something for us today, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, as we open our hearts and our mind to you this morning, oh God, speak to us, Lord. And knowing these lips of clay, that I may speak your word. Hallelujah. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I didn't come here this morning because it's Sunday. Or because I'll bring the word of the Lord to you today. I came here this morning because... When the people of God gather together, hmm, something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. Anything can happen. Where the presence of God is, there is peace. There is joy. There is liberty. There is deliverance. Amen. There is victory. And you heard, we heard a lot of praises this morning. About what God has done in their lives. Beginning this week, I was, uh, I was a little bit of attack as well. Satan is trying to put some doubts and discouragement in my mind and for some or if not for many of us are feeling the same thing but you know what church what I'm, what I'm gonna tell him this morning 
he won't get any victory in my life. Because I know who God is. Amen. He already died on the cross. We already get a victory. Amen. Amen. And I want to go where the people of God gather is. Because that's where I'm getting courage. I heard one of the testimonies this morning. That's where we get strengthened. Get motivated in our walk, in our service to God. And we hear that as well that we're going to get connected to God and help you do too. I keep coming into the house of the Lord because I've got some needs that God and only God can feel and satisfy. Amen. And I don't want to isolate myself. You know what happens when you isolate yourself. When you forsake the assembly and the gathering of the people of God, you will die spiritually. Slowly, slowly, you will die spiritually. Your enthusiasm in serving God will diminish. Your prayer life will be affected. The things that you not supposed to do before, now you're doing it. Now you're entertaining it. You will get easily attacked by the enemy. You fell into temptation. And eventually you will get numb of the things of God. That's why we're going to go to the house of God. We don't forsake the assembly of the brethren, of the gathering. Because if you do, you will die spiritually. And you will become more complacent. Today I will be talking to you about the kingdom of God. How can we be more effective in the kingdom of God? I believe all of us, God called us. He brought us from the miracle into his marvelous light. So, how can we be more effective in his kingdom? Again, these questions will go down to us as individuals. As a child of God, how can we, or how can you be effective in his kingdom? In the book of Matthew chapter 25, the Lord speaks about the parable of the talents. The Lord gave to them according to their abilities. We know the stories. But my question this morning is, when God comes, will he find faith in us? We heard one of the testimonies this morning that God will come soon. Will he find faith in us? Jesus is coming back. And that means we are to use our time, our talents, and treasure diligently in order to serve God completely in whatever we do. Doing our daily work out of love for God. Each of us, God has given us a talent. The last man in the parable of talent was only thinking of himself. We know the story. He always thinking of himself. So what he did, he hid his talent to protect himself from the hard master. Church, we should not make excuses to avoiding doing what God calls us to do. We should not make excuses. My question is, are we content what we are now in our walk, in our service to the Lord? Are we content? Are we happy to come here every Sunday 
gather together, yes. But what are we can do into his kingdom? Are we going to keep it to ourselves, this great salvation that God has revealed to us? Are we not going to share it to the people, to our family, our friends, the oneness of God? Baptism in Jesus' name? Filling of the Holy Ghost? Are we going to keep it to ourselves or are we going to share it to them? That's my question this morning. Because Jesus said, Unless a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. There you go again. From our scripture that we read this morning, unless you humble yourself, So whenever I get a chance, I share the word of God at work, most of the time. So let me encourage you this morning. Don't, don't, let's not be wary of what we're doing or, or we're sowing seeds, you know? Some might feel in the stony, on the wayside. But let's keep sowing the word of God. Amen? Amen. Keep sowing. The harvest will come. The harvest will come. It's the law of the sowing and reaping. How can we be more effective in the kingdom of God? How? I've got a list of things here that we're going to consider. Um... First, you have to discover. Discover what your talent is. Ask yourself, what is your passion? What is your passion that you're going to pursue or do in the kingdom of God? Discover it. What is important and meaningful in your life or that matters to you? But don't take time to define why, which relates to your passion or your purpose or your desires or your vision. Don't take time for that one. Define your objectives. That's what you're going to do. What is your specific goal? Your prayer. Are you going to pray every day? Or are you going to pray once? Every other day, once a week, once a month. You have to define your objectives. Targeting souls. How are you going to do it? If you get passion to share the word of God, make plans for it. How many souls am I going to target this week? How many souls am I going to share the word of God this week? And the next thing is how you're going to achieve it. What strategy are you going to use? What methods? Or what plans? It's good to make plans. At home, I got plans. Yearly plans. Monthly plans. You know? Tick boxes. Pay the bills? Yes. Things to do. Next. I've done that one? Yes, I've done that. It's good to make plans. And the next question is, when are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? Make a time frame, that's what I said. And when to achieve your goal. Once you've done that, pursue your passion. Pursue it. Pray for it. Ask God to help you. If your passion in teaching, in teaching Sunday school kids, then do what necessary things that you can do. Read books. Pray for it. If your passion in music, what are you going to do? You're going to stay at home and play? You want to play here in the pulpit? Come every Saturday afternoon. 
sacrifices. We need sacrifices. We need effort. We need time. There's time, money, energy involved in doing the things of God. You might heard some people say, oh, I don't know what my passion is. Some people say that. You know why? Because you will see him here, you will see, you will see them there, there, they're everywhere. They don't have a specific, a target, a plan in their lives, what they're going to do. You need to have a specific direction and goal. Yes, we are here to do about our Father's business. And we are not just satisfied in sitting here, but to do about our Father's business. And how are we going to do it? How do we want to achieve it? The impact, the difference that we make in His kingdom, how are we going to do it? Again, think about the ways that you will achieve your purpose. As I said, God called us. God called us. He brought us from the miraculously into his marvelous light. And remember, we do it for the kingdom of God and for his glory. Amen. Not for ourselves. Not for our own glory. God commanded us to make disciples to all nations. He commanded. God gave some apostles. God gave some prophets. Some evangelists. He didn't give all. Some. So it's up to us as individuals where to find where your passion and work in it and bring it into the kingdom of God and use it. Again, think what you can do in this kingdom and pray about it. These things is by prayer and fasting. We cannot do it by ourselves. It's by prayer and fasting. Humbleness. Humble yourselves and seek His face and ask His guidance and direction. And that's what you're going to do. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 37, verse 4, it said, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Amen. 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 Delight thyself in the Lord. Arrogant and pride has no place in the kingdom of God. Humbleness and humility is. Amen. Amen. In the scripture that we read in the book of Matthew 18, here we look at the story in the Bible where Jesus and his disciples came into the house in Capernaum and the disciples are arguing. There you go. They're arguing, having a dispute among themselves. Who would be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? They're arguing themselves. That's why Jesus brought a little child in front of them. And you notice that Jesus didn't brought the wise man. He didn't brought the rich man. Because Jesus clearly thought that humble yourself as a child, that humbleness is, and you'll be to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. Teach a child and a child will follow without hesitation. That's the nature of the child. 
humble yourself as a child. Not acting like childish, that's what it means. But rather childlike with humble and sincere hearts. Not childish act. Humble yourself. We'll speak about that later as we go along. But what is the kingdom of God? The book of Matthew chapter 6 and 33 says, Jesus said, But yes, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. All these things. What you're going to do is seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. You know what the secret in success in life is? That you have to put God first. Seek He first the kingdom of God in His righteousness. Romans 14 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but what? Righteousness and peace and joy and the Holy Ghost. The righteousness Apostle Paul refers here is it's a righteous, it's a right standing with God that we are now in a new and right relationship with Him. God commanded us to preach the gospel to all nations. He said it to His disciples, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. That's what He said to His disciples. And I will be with you always to the end of the world. That's God's promise. He promised it. God promised that He will never leave us nor forsake us, saints. So, so that we may be bold to say, The Lord is my shepherd, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. God promised. Hold on to His promises. God said in the book of Psalms, chapter 89, No, I will not break my covenant. I want to take back one word of what I said. What God said, He will do it. That's Him. All the promises of God in Him are yea and amen. Hallelujah. God promised us eternal life. He promised us eternal life. And whatsoever believe in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Amen. He promised us peace. A peace that passes all understanding that keeps our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. God promised us forgiveness. That if we confess our sin, He is able. Amen. He is able to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God promised that to us. So when God promised, He will fulfill that. So let us be patient in doing the things in the kingdom of God. It took years and years for Joseph to see his dream fulfilled. And I believe if some or most of us are really done to share the word of God to somebody else, and sometimes we cannot see the fruit of it, but we don't get discouraged. Take the life of Joseph, his dreams fulfilled years in years. He go through a lot of difficulties in his life and trials, but at the end, what God promised to him was fulfilled. What God promised in your life, he will fulfill it. Saints, as we remain faithful in our walk and our service to God, Little by little, God will reveal things to us. Amen. What the book of Isaiah says, but, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew our strength. Shall renew their strength. That's what we're going to do. That's why we come in the gathering of the people. That's where we renew our strength. Amen. That's where we get motivated. Hallelujah. As we wait, as we hold on to the promises of God, let us be patient. Let us be patient. 
There are some things or circumstances that needs time to happen. So don't get up. Don't give up or disappointed if things won't happen to what your expectation is. Remember, God works in a different way. He works in a mighty way. Amen? Our thoughts, His thoughts, are higher than our thoughts. And His ways are higher than our ways. So praise Him, not only in good times, but in the bad times as well. When we're facing some trials and difficulties in our life, in our walk with Him, just continue to praise Him. Amen. Amen. And I think that's what we're going to do. Praise him, him more when we go through some difficulties in our life. Because we got confident that God will bring us through. Amen. God inhabits the praises of his people. You know why? The wall of Jericho fell because the people of God praise. Amen. At midnight when Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God, what happened? He sent an earthquake and shake the prison. Because they praise. They praise him. Because they prayed. Hallelujah. And the Lord heard them and shook the place. You know why we're not getting more effective in the works of in the works in the kingdom of God? Because most of the time we do it by our own strength. We're not seeking God's direction. Amen. Church, we need a fresh anointing from God. We need a fresh anointing from God. A fresh touch from God. Amen. That's what we need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm talking this to myself. You know why we keep falling the same ditch again and again? One moment we get a victory, the next thing, we get defeated. Because we don't spend more time with the Lord in our prayers. We don't linger in His presence in our prayer. He said, pray lest you enter into temptation. Church, now is the time for us to rise and trim our lamps. Trim our lamps. Humble ourselves and seek His face. Now is the time. Now is the time for us to get serious of what we are doing in His kingdom. Hallelujah. As I call the musicians, musicians to come. Second Chronicles chapter 7 says, in verse 14, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sins and heal their land. When God appeared to King Solomon that night, when he prayed to God, when he said that, if my people humbled themselves, my people called by my name, since we are here this morning, called by God, baptized in his name, 
Hallelujah. If we humble ourselves and pray and seek His face, then He will hear from us. He will, he will forgive our sins. And He will heal our land. Unless we acknowledge and identify our sins and take responsibility on it, then we have no hope. We have no hope. Church, God hates arrogant and proud. Search our heart, Lord. Search our heart. If there's any pride in our hearts, oh God. Church, if you want revival, then it should begin from ourselves. It begins from us to our house into our community. Jesus said, these things come forth for nothing but by prayer and fasting. I pray because I got demons in my back that are trying to pull me down every time I'm in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Pray lest you enter into temptation. I encourage you this morning, brothers and sisters, pray and seek the face of God. Hallelujah. Brother Peter.